what is going on everybody so two things I want to say before we get in today's video one is we finally got merch so this has been something I've been working on for a while we have three different merch designs all of which we designed and they're super super cool so if you really want to support the channel everything that we're doing all the different videos that we're trying to make right now link will be in the description and at the top of the comments section for you to go buy merch I'm gonna advertise it a little bit over the next couple weeks just to where everybody can see it and there is a very limited supply right now so if you do want it please act fast because it's very limited right now depending on how many people order it though we might get more so we'll see how that goes also today's video is a combination of all the footage that we filmed while we were down in the Everglades and this is something that I've been wanting to try for a while is to see if my videos could go into a documentary format in a sense. We did a whole trip, it was a few days that we were down in South Florida and I wanted to see if it could combine into one really big documentary. So yeah, with that said, let's get on to the video. Thank you guys for watching. We're heading off on the adventure of a lifetime to see some of the most incredible wildlife the U.S. has to offer down in South Florida. From the sandy pine forest to the coastal mangroves, and even in the big cities, Florida is full to the brim with animals. While these special environments are home to some incredibly rare and endangered species, it's also home to the invasive species found all over the world. While I'm here, I'm hoping to get an up-close look at the endangered American crocodile and the invasive Burmese python two of the most incredible apex predators found here in South Florida. On our first night, we're hoping to see many of the native species that call this area home. Being from Louisiana, I'm pretty familiar with a lot of the species here, but the environment is so different. It's all like one giant, flowing, crystal clear river. It's really beautiful. So basically our goal tonight is to see how many snakes we can get out here. There's a whole stack of different species, a lot of common varieties, a lot of rare ones, and lots I've definitely never found, and plenty that we've never filmed before. So this should be pretty special. Let's just keep driving and see what we can find. Yes, 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 this is great. Corn, beautiful, look at you. How you doing, little buddy? Turn my light off here. Have a look at that. Yes! That is a little corn snake. Oh, it's okay, bud. It's just a little guy. These are very, very cool species. These are one of my favorite snakes, one of the friendliest snakes around normally. Sometimes they can be a bit bitey here in Florida, but this one, perfectly, perfectly nice. Smallest one that I've ever actually caught. Now back home, this is actually a pretty uncommon species for me. Around Louisiana and Mississippi, you don't see many corn snakes. But here in South Florida, this is a very common species. And it's really cool to see them in the wild like this. And they have a much brighter coloration here than they do back in Louisiana. Hello, little buddy. This is a small one. They get much bigger than this. They can reach lengths of five, five and a half. And some massive cases can reach six foot, although that's extremely rare. Really cool little guy. And we're gonna go ahead and get him off the road. All right, see you, little buddy. Get off the road. There's a lot of people back here. Boop, boop, boop. Go on. Get back in there. Yo, our first moccasin. Check this out. That is our first Florida moccasin right there. Don't go nowhere, bud. Whoa, it's okay. It's all right. Have a look at this snake. Now you can tell they look quite a bit different. Ooh. It's all right. I need you to stay in the road just for a minute. Now Florida moccasins look a bit different than ours in Louisiana. They're a completely different subspecies. These snakes get a lot bigger. He's got a much cleaner pattern. They've got a narrower head. There's a bunch of differences between these snakes and they're also a bit more sluggish on land. This snake definitely could put a lot of venom in you. Cottonmouths can be dangerous. They are a dangerous snake. Hello. Notice how he's very whippy on land. He's very whippy. Cottonmouths are a very whippy snake in general, but the ones here in Florida are very sluggish on land. And that's because they're very used to the slow moving water. That's how they spend their entire day. So on land, they're just terrible at moving around. Florida moccasins are really interesting. I hope we find a bigger one. They definitely have some really cool colorations here, but for now, we're just gonna let this guy on his way. Spotting snakes on the road at night is a great way to see all kinds of species during the summer months. During the day, it's just a bit too hot for the snakes to be active this time of the year. So a lot of snakes we'll be searching for will be at night. This is a Florida green snake. 
This road is absolutely crawling with these little guys. Ah, oh, yes, you're putting on a big bluff. But they are not as aggressive as some of the other water snakes. He still will bite me, though. Look at him. Hooding up. Cute little guy. Florida green water snakes look quite different from the ones back home. The Florida green is different from the Mississippi green in that it has a lot more patterning. And uh, overall, the temperament is quite a bit better. Although you can see he's kind of flaring his neck up, trying to look like something else, trying to look bigger. Look at that little guy. He's beautiful. This is probably the most common snake species out here. Oh, it's okay. This road absolutely crawls with them. It's hard to, hard to miss them, basically, with the car, because they're just everywhere. This is a medium-sized one, probably a yearling, last year's baby. But right now, some babies are being born. So uh, it's a really cool snake to see. But we're going to go ahead and put him down and keep looking. All right, see you, little greenie. Back off you get. Go on, get off the road. All right, we got two snakes right here. I think that's a little green. But this is something cool. This is something I want to show you guys. I think if I'm right about this, it's okay. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Have a look at that snake. Oh, it's okay. Oh, don't bite me. If I'm right about this, I think that this is a mix. And what I mean by that is this is a mix between a Florida water snake and a salt marsh snake. I think, is that a little green snake? Yeah, a little green snake's just hanging out over there. I just wanted to make sure it was a green. Now this is about as big as this snake will get. Can get a bump bigger, but this is an adult. But this is actually a mix of two different water snake species. The salt marsh snake and the Florida water snake. This is really interesting. This is the first time I've seen this. I've heard of it plenty of times. It's a very aggressive snake species. He will chomp you. In fact, as you can see from earlier, we weren't filming, but I got chomped by one earlier on my hand right there. But they have a really faded banding, and the way you can tell, they've got this really cool belly pattern, similar to that of a marsh snake. Ah, darn mosquitoes, they're everywhere. It's got a little bump on his skin, a little it's got a little parasite on his skin, but not a rare snake by any means, but definitely something really unique to South Florida that you're not going to see in many other places. Oh, it's okay, little buddy. All right, we're going to go ahead and let this little guy go, but I just thought that was really special. That's a big birdie corn. Hello, sweetie. What are you doing? This is insane. Have a look at that snake. Adult corn snake. Gorgeous thing. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, you're angry. This one's not going to be friendly. This one will bite. This one will bite. This is a big, I'm guessing, female corn snake. This is so wild. Back home, this is such an uncommon snake to see. But these roads, they're a very common species. Look at that. Big female corn. And this one is not going to be as timid as the last one. If I mess up, she will try to bite me. See how she's kind of cocking her head back? She must on me the second I picked her up. This is more of the less typical attitude of corn snake, which is where they're much more like a normal rat snake. They will bite, but still an absolutely gorgeous snake. I do not catch these snakes often. I almost rarely get them. And that is insanely special for me. Have a look at, oh, it's okay, don't bite me. This is a average size adult. In fact, back home, I've got one about this size. Beautiful snake. Look at that shiny coloration. Now corn snakes, out here are going to be eating a lot of lizards. They will eat rodents, but uh, they will mostly be eating lizards. Out on these roads at night, they'd mostly just be trying to heat up, and then they'll go and hunt lizards and mice for the night. The snakes here are very aquatic. They spend a lot of time in the water, but oftentimes you can shine along the water and uh, see them up in the trees, because they're also a very good climbing snake. This snake looks very healthy, although she's got a slight nub tail, which isn't uncommon for these snakes to have. Whether they spun it off or something bit it off, it's not super uncommon for that to happen. So, all right, well, we're going to go ahead and let this little snake go, but that is beautiful. Incredible to see. All right, say goodbye to Corny, baby. Big adult corn. And thank, thank you very much for not biting me. Go on, sweetie. That's incredible. Woohoo! Another snake. The next day, we're heading out in search of some invasive lizard species. They can be found all throughout the urban areas here in Miami. Almost everywhere you look there's lizards, and many of them are just too quick to catch by hand, like these gorgeous rockagamas. Miami is a major shipping area for the pet trade, and with the tropical environment, it was the perfect setup for species from all across the world to end up here. The lizards in the cities don't cause too many problems, since they mostly just live in urban areas. 
However, there are some invasive species that cause serious problems for native wildlife, such as tegus and the very famous Burmese pythons. Since they tend to live in more native environments, they outcompete and eat local species. We're going out with my good friend Emilio in search of some really cool invasive lizards. The iguanas have become some of the biggest city residents around here. They feed mostly on vegetation, but they'll eat another iguana or even a basilisk if they can catch them. The best way to catch iguanas is actually with a snare, so Emilio is going to show me how to do it and then I'll give it a try myself. This is a little black-tailed iguana, or a spiny black-tailed. This is actually the fastest lizard in the world. And Amelia um, just did a great job snaring yeah, it. Yeah, snared it's him with okay. this makeshift pole. Yeah, it worked really well. They're a fast nice lizard, step. really hard to catch by hand. And uh, this wouldn't be an, a, a full-grown adult. This would be a medium-sized one here. The females don't get as big as the males, but uh, this is a little cutie. I'm not sure if this is a female or a juvenile male. Have a look at these claws. They climb really good. They got big old claws on them. And uh, you can kind of see why they're called a black-tailed or a spiny-tailed because they've got black bands and their tail has all these little spines on it. Now, Emilio is really used to seeing these. They're a common species down here in South Florida. Uh, they are an invasive species, in fact, but uh, now they're very, very established, especially in urban areas like this. This is a little golf course. And as you can see, there's a big one running back there, a couple of them. They're very, very common. They eat birds' eggs, other lizards. Oftentimes, they'll rip each other's tails off and eat them. They'll eat pretty much anything that they can get. But actually, most of what they eat is plant matter. They're mostly herbivores, and they eat all kinds of grasses, little plants, any fruits that they can get a hold of. And uh, they hiss really loud when you catch them. But normally, they're going to stay away from you. They're not aggressive by any means. It's OK. They're not aggressive, but if you grab them, they will try to get you. Yeah, the term is more defensive than aggressive. Yeah, but, pretty yeah. much. He'll try to whack you if you grab them, which he was. He was pretty aware once he had a snare around him, and they do have a little bit of a dewlap. They're not like the animals that have that big puff out, but the males, once they get big, they do have a little bit of a, a dewlap down there. So very cool. We're gonna let this one go and uh, maybe see if we can maybe see if we can get a bigger one. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, we're gonna let this guy go. We're gonna see if we can catch a bigger one, and I'm also gonna see if I can catch one by hand, but uh, clearly the snare is the way to go with these big guys. Yeah, and then we're also gonna see right now the speed, because since they are the fastest lizard in the world, we hope he's gonna bolt as soon as he puts it down. They're lightning fast. Are you ready? Here we go. Two, three. There he goes. Back Very the nice. The lizards here mostly rely on their speed, but the babies rely on camouflage, as to not be seen by larger, faster lizards. So I actually managed to catch a young iguana by hand. Here we go. Check this out. All right. Little baby green. Little baby green. This is a baby green iguana. Look it's at him. Pretty. He's like six inches long. Yeah, probably just newborn. That's a little tiny baby. Hello, little guy. These guys are, in fact, an invasive species here. But uh, they look kind of, when they're this small, almost as if they belong here. Now, these guys actually hang out around the water quite often. And uh, their green color is pretty camouflaged. It's harder to see the babies up in here. The babies more rely on camouflage than anything. Whereas the adults more or less are trying to rely on their speed. And when they get really big, they'll actually stand up to you if you try to mess with them. These little guys are very cute. He's got a long banded tail. And when they're this little, they can look similar to the, uh, the black spiny tailed iguana, which both are non-native species here and are both invading most of the urban areas around here. They're very common. You'll see these guys in the cities. Really anywhere you can see these guys. And uh, I'd have to guess that this is a little male, but not sure. It's really hard to tell when they're little tiny babies. But uh, he's a real cutie. And this is the first green iguana we've seen here. So uh, yeah, this is really cool. Yeah, one way you can actually tell them apart from baby black spiny tailed iguana is, is the baby black spiny tailed iguana will only have the green on the head. He's still gonna have that classic black body. Yeah. But the green iguana, like the name says, is gonna be almost completely green except for the bands on the side. Very cool. Well, we're gonna let this little guy go and uh, see what else we can find. All right, see you, little buddy. Watch him take off. Here you go, bud. Oh, oh. <laughs> he dove. Another invasive species found around Florida's waterways are basilisk lizards, nicknamed the Jesus lizard because they can actually run across the surface of the water. They're obviously pretty fast, 
but they can be reluctant to go into the water at first while they're up in trees and bushes. So I actually managed to snag a nice size one. Hang on. Basilisk? Yeah. Big nice. One. Big one business. Right, bring them up. Woohoo! There we go. Speedy boys. Nice size male. He's a little cutie. <laughs> All right. That's a big brown basilisk. Look at those yellow stripes. Big sail. It's like a little Spinosaurus. That's solid bone right there. These suckers are fast. Another invasive lizard here in South Florida. Very common in urban areas, but a pretty fast lizard. Best way to catch them is when it gets darker. And uh, these guys are fast. In fact, the nickname for these guys is actually the Jesus Lizard, because what they can do is they can get up on these front feet and run across water for a very short period of time, mind you, but they can run across the top. And that's what these guys are famous for. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Now you see these guys all the time. Yeah, yeah. They, they hang out pretty much everywhere around where I live. And I can just hold them for a sec. Yeah, you take them. You see right here, they have very long toes. And those toes have special scales called fringes. And that's actually what traps the air bubbles when they're running on the surface of the water, which helps stay, keep them afloat. So that's how they're able to just jump and just run across. Now, like he mentioned, they can only do this for a very short amount of time, maybe 10 feet tops. And after that, what they'll do is that they'll dive under the water and then swim until they're free from the predator. No kidding. Now, yeah. do you know much about these guys' diet? Because I'm not super familiar with what yeah, these yeah, guys Yeah, yeah, it's mostly eat. insects. So they're mostly insects. Mostly insects, yeah. The iguanas down here are more herbivores. They're mostly around here eating grasses and stuff. They will eat some bugs, but uh, apparently these guys are much more bug eaters. They're not going to go around eating all kinds of little plants. Yeah, but they'll also actually hunt down smaller lizards like brown and green and all. Ah, okay. So that, that's something that'll keep them really well fed. There's a ton of those. And they've got super sharp scales right along the back. If I go like this, it'd probably slice me open. Super hard ridge along the yeah. back. And you What's can really see... really floppy though is this little kind of like crest he has on the back. He's got a cool crest. I guess that's the easiest way to tell a basilisk from some of the other lizards here is they've got that big top crest. After chasing lizards all day, we're heading out with Daniel Wakefield to search for snakes, and maybe even get a chance to see some American crocodiles while we're out here. Evening time is a great time to see some of the rarer snake species that live here, but come nighttime, we'll be heading to the coastal mangroves in search of crocodiles, as well as the Burmese pythons. While we search for these giant invasive snakes, we also came across some of the gorgeous native species that are found here. What's up guys, I'm just here with Zach and uh, we found our first snake of the night, a little uh, sub-adult Florida cottonmouth. These are uh, pretty common species uh, down here in South Florida in these uh, freshwater swamps. And uh, I still love finding them, even though they're common. They're a really cool venomous snake. Um, always a nice addition to the night. So hopefully it's a good, good sign of things to come. South Florida may seem like just one big marsh, but it's actually many different environments marshes, pine forests, dwarf cypress biomes. Then, as you get closer to the end of the peninsula, it becomes brackish mangroves and sandy coastline. While the American crocodile spends its time in the brackish saltwater environments, the Burmese pythons can live in almost any aquatic environment found around here. Not long into the night, we actually got to see our first python. Have a look at this! Yes, 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 yes! Come here. I'm starting around. Oh my goodness, that is... One of the main things that we were after. Ooh, now he's trying to bite. Now he's trying to bite. It's okay. It's okay. That's a little Burmese python. Yes, that's who we came down here to find. This is one of the most famous. He is trying to bite me. This is one of the most famous invasive species in South Florida. Now this is a little guy. This would probably be a year or two old. This is a very small one. These guys grow to be one of the largest snakes in the world. Jeez, I don't want to get bit by it. This is a small one, so it uh, wouldn't be that bad to get tagged by it, but uh, still, they got a pretty tough bite. This one, I'd guess four, four and a half foot long. That is beautiful. Look at how little he is. Hello. Hello. Are you going to calm down? Nope. He almost got me right there. They've got this beautiful, shiny color. They're brown. They got this really cool brown coloration. He's hissing, he's upset. This is definitely what we came here to find. This is a Burmese python. This is the first wild python I've ever caught. Now, these snakes are a super prolific species. They lay a ton of eggs. When they reach sexual maturity, they will lay dozens and dozens of eggs. 
they can lay insane amounts because as you can imagine this is a big snake and they're born almost a foot long if not over a foot long sometimes and that means they've got a huge advantage huge advantage over native species because they're a lot bigger right off the bat not a nice snake as you can see they're kind of like a big giant mean water snake it's kind of my best description he is calming down the more I handle him but that doesn't mean the second his tongue hits my body he is gonna try to bite me but you can see he's not kind of striking out anymore he will sit there let me hold him out now these snake species have record lengths of over 20 feet however that's insanely rare to see Normally you're gonna see these guys around eight to uh, 12 feet on average in the park. However, they can reach 15 feet, 16 feet. They get some massive ones in here. I'm just happy to find a Burmese. This is a cute little guy, probably a yearling. Beautiful species. They're from the other side of the world, which is insane. They got here from the pet trade. Miami is kind of the pet trade center of the United States. Uh, there was actually a couple of breeding centers, research centers that got knocked out by hurricanes and that released a couple hundred into the Everglades on their own. Not to mention people releasing them as pets. Uh, and that's how a lot of invasive species got here. They eat a lot of the native bird species and they eat crocodiles. Crocodiles, American crocodiles specifically. No, oh, it's okay. American crocodiles specifically aren't endangered species. So these guys eating them is an issue. They eat a lot of the rare water birds. So uh, obviously they have people that are permitted to come in the park and remove them and uh, euthanize them properly. However, other people aren't actually allowed to do that. That python was actually pretty small, so we're going to keep searching for a bigger one. And along the way, we're going to get to see plenty of other native species. Yo! <laughs> Look at this! Oh my goodness! That right there is a scarlet snake. That is one of the most beautiful snakes you can even find out here. Look at him! It's a little tricolor. Red, kind of a brownish gray in the middle, and a black. My goodness, he's a really thin snake. I didn't know they were this thin. Now, scarlet snakes are a really unique species. They actually mostly eat skink eggs and little skinks. They're very particular about their diet, and they've got a little pointy nose. Their face kind of reminds me of a long-nosed snake in a lot of ways, but they're very thin. Their build is very different from them. Very different build from king snakes and milk snakes. There's another very similar looking species called the, uh, the scarlet king snake. They have a very different looking face and the scarlet king tends to have a little bit more straight banding, but the face is my easiest way of telling. Obviously there's a lot of little differences between them, but uh, this is an extremely, extremely cool snake. They're actually very rare where I'm at, but uh, here in Florida, they're actually a common species, which is crazy. Now, there's an old saying with snakes like this, red on black, venom black, red on yellow, kill a fellow. And while that's not applicable everywhere, it is for this snake. You'll tell that the red is touching the black, and that means that this is not a coral snake. Now obviously, these guys look very different from coral snakes. They're normally a little bit bigger. They've got a different looking face. I love that orange band on the head. That's the main reason why walking straight up to it, I could tell it was a scarlet snake. Oh my goodness, yes! He's beautiful. He's over a foot long. You see, look at that, bright colors. This is one of my favorite snakes, honestly. This is what I wanted to find down here, and we're getting to see it, and it's incredible. Now these snakes, obviously you can tell it's not aggressive, not trying to bite me at all. And uh, they spend a lot of their time underground, in little logs, but at nighttime they come out and they'll start looking for stuff. They tend to live in between the pine bark in many areas. However, this is kind of like a little mangrove section here, so he'd probably be living in a little burrow, or uh, living up and along these mangroves. It's a really unique species in a really unique habitat. So this is incredible. First one I've ever seen. They've got a plain belly. That's another way you can tell them from the coral snake. Of course, you're not gonna wanna lift up a coral snake, but uh, it's just interesting that the bands don't go all the way around. Now, another thing that I'm just being told is the scarlet king snake has bands that go all the way around as well. So the scarlet snake does not. So if you wanna pick up, if you know it's a non-venomous species, that it's not a coral, you can pick it up look at that belly and say, okay, this is a scarlet snake because the bands don't go all the way around, or it's a scarlet king. There's actually no milk snakes here in this part of Florida, and in many other parts of the country, we get uh, tricolored snakes, which is kind of that red, whitish, yellow, and black coloration. It's called a tricolor. And this is probably the most common tricolor in Florida. And uh, the other two are very special. You got the scarlet king and the coral snake. They're all special to me but this is the most common of them, but absolutely gorgeous snake. What a champ. All right, see you little buddy.
Walk into the grass. Gorgeous. Let's go right in. Look at this. We got another scarlet. It's okay. Okay, he's. This is a different one, 100%. We're coming back, but it's definitely a different one because it's got a broken band on its tail there. And he's got a little bit of a smaller head. Look at that. He's got another broken band there. Just goes to show you that this beautiful snake is actually common here. Ooh, he's much stouter. Still not gonna bite. Still a beautiful snake. Oh, it's okay. I love these guys. I absolutely love them. Any tricolor is an absolute win for me. He's got a little bit brighter bands, like the whitish coloration, the whitish gray bands are a little bit brighter. He's definitely stouter. Man, this is incredible. I had no idea these guys were so common in the Everglades until we got down here. But uh, apparently, it's not rare to see them. The only other thing I could imagine that would make this better would be a Scarlet King or a Coral Snake, either of the other two tricolors. Those, those other two are pretty rare, but this has absolutely made the night. Look at that. Beautiful little Scarlet. Alright, here you go little guy, back into the grass, come on, no go that way, go that way, come on, boop boop boop, yeah look at this, it's a little Florida, hello buddy, have a look at this little guy, oh you're missing a leg, that's sad, you're a little, two legs, oh my god, no, no, you know, you've got, you've got your other leg, it's just tough, no, no that's a nub, this, this, talk, this turtle's got two nubs. Survivor. You are a survivor. This is a Florida soft shell. These are totally different from the ones we get back home. Back home, we get what's called the spiny soft shell, and occasionally you'll get a Gulf Coast smooth soft shell, but uh, as you can see, these guys have a perfectly smooth shell. They've kind of got a darker coloration and this little pinkish face. They've got little stripes along it. They get really big here, and uh, this is the first one I've seen here. I actually have one of these back home, and they're a really sweet animal. They mostly prey on little invertebrates, but these guys will eat fish, and they're pretty good at catching them. They're a very fast turtle when they want to be. They're fast on land, and they're fast in the water. Have a look at that little fella. No, no, no. Oh, it's okay. They've got a mouth like a little snapping turtle. It's a very sharp little mouth, and uh, if I put my finger out in front, he might try to bite it. They've got a super long neck. They can stretch out their body, and their head will be about that long once they stretch their neck out. And see that little nose? They reach that nose out like a little snorkel. And they get air, and they come back down. I'm sorry, I'm scaring you. All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and let this little turtle cross the road, but uh, that is beautiful. All right, sweetie, we found you some water. Nice, crystal clear. Pretty. All right, see you, little turtle. Put you right in. There you go. Now that we've reached the coast, it's time to search for crocodiles. And here's our first one, about a seven foot female croc, hanging right around the dock. They're not an aggressive crocodile species, and they see people really often here, so we can actually get pretty close without disturbing or bothering the crocodile. All right guys, well we're right now hanging out with this little adorable seven foot American crocodile right here in this boat launch. They're a very nocturnal species. They'll come up here at night, just kind of hang out. I've never seen anything like it. They look completely different from the American alligator. They have a more slender build, a lot less bulky than the American alligator. Got that snout. This is about a seven foot individual, so this is a nice size adult crocodile. Obviously, we don't want to scare away. We don't want to stress her out. We just want to leave her here, not mess with her too much. And look at how close we are. I'm about six feet away. Hello, baby. I want to do my best to not scare her off, even after we've left, but... Hello, baby. Not aggressive whatsoever. Perfectly relaxed. This thing is extremely powerful. Could lunge at me if it wanted to. Could scare me off pretty easily. She's bigger. She's just as big, if not bigger than me. And uh, she's perfectly relaxed. I'm so glad she's not leaving. She's very used to people, obviously. This is the best way to see an American crocodile. That is insane. See you, sweetie. This is incredible. What a score. Our first croc ever. But that's not the only endangered species hanging around this dock tonight. I want to show you guys this real quick. This is incredible. Sawfish critically endangered species. 
Never seen one before. That's incredible. The small tooth sawfish is a critically endangered species due to overfishing for their fins. It's an absolute shame. They've become incredibly rare to see almost anywhere. They can grow to be over 25 feet in length. That is one gigantic fish. They used to live along the Atlantic coast all the way up to New York, but now the only place that you can find them in the U.S. is the very tip of Florida, right at the Caribbean. It's incredible that we're getting a chance to see this little guy. Just gotta make sure he stays a good ways away from these big crocs. American crocodiles are a protected species, but we were able to get special permission to handle any crocodiles that wandered onto the road, so long as we release them safely off the road afterwards, as to where they wouldn't get hit. The odds of seeing an American crocodile in the road are insanely rare, but while driving back through the mangroves, I saw something that looked kind of like a baby alligator. Oh my goodness. Have a look at that. We're going to be very quick. Yo. Check that out. That is a baby American crocodile back here in the mangroves of South Florida. Hanging out on the road. Look at how fat he is. And uh, he didn't try to bite me when I picked him up. American crocodiles are a very calm species. Very beautiful animal. Have a look at him. Now they're an endangered species down here. And uh, we're under the guise of literally just moving this guy off the road. Literally, we're just gonna film him really quickly. Get this guy back, back into the water. But my goodness. This is something I did not expect to see on the road. But that's insane. This is probably less than a year old. Little, little small fry here. You can see how these guys are different from the American alligator. Big long snout. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And look at that tail. Tail looks different too. Well, he's a little tubby guy. He's a little fatso. This is an absolute star. An absolutely beautiful, gorgeous animal. And one that's getting some serious protection. And uh, because of that, we're not going to handle him for too long. And we're going to put him right back into these mangroves where he belongs. But that is insane. Now, American crocodiles, while I said they are docile, the American version, uh, he would still bite me. If I didn't grab him properly, he would turn and bite me in self-defense, because that's proper. This little guy doesn't want to be picked up. He thinks I'm a big predator. He sees multiple big predators around him. And, uh, you know, he doesn't know that we mean him no harm, but I'm being very gentle, very relaxed. The American crocodile is a special species. And uh, really, uh, I really want to show some side-by-side -side comparisons of the alligator with these guys one day, but uh, that's not going to be today. Obviously, it's an endangered species, so uh, who knows? Maybe we'll get to check these guys out at a facility. There's some great conservation work for these animals. They don't get as big as the ones in Australia. The ones in Australia are known to be the aggressive, big saltwater crocodiles, and there's also the more mild freshwater crocodiles, but there's many other species of crocodile throughout the world. And the Americans max out at around 12 to 14 feet. They rarely get bigger than that. This is a little baby one, but uh, they mean no harm to people. And they're not something to be afraid of, especially here in America. Obviously, we need to still be aware of these guys and when we're in their natural habitat, be very respectful of them. And uh, don't be swimming up to these guys. Please do your best to respect these guys. It's a beautiful animal and something that hopefully we'll get to see a lot more in the future thanks to conservation work. Beautiful species, beautiful crocodile, and I love them. Let me see. Let me kiss you. Mwah! Kiss the little crocodile. All right, we got our little American croc. He's gonna go right back down into the mangrove. Didn't have too long. And right back here, straight up water. He's gonna take off and be good. Go, little baby. Oh, he's stuck. There he goes. Bye, buddy. Look him back there. American crocs are a big reason pythons are a problem in the Everglades. A large python would eat a crocodile this size, as well as many native mammal and bird species. Burmese pythons are so well established in the Everglades, many people become licensed python hunters to help control the python populations. However, only licensed hunters are allowed to do this, due to the destruction of native snake species in the past by snake hunters, thinking that they're all pythons. As we were driving along, Daniel spotted a really nice sized python right on the shoulder of the road. This is exactly what we're here to see. Yo, yes! Yes! That's a big one. Biggest wild snake I've ever caught. This is about a six foot Burmese python. It's okay, baby. It's okay. Musking on me. I can't really worry about that because there's a big mouth down there. That is taller than me. That's a six foot snake easy. Easily a six foot snake. Hello, sweetie. 
Hello, sweetie. Have a look at that. It's a Whopper. You're not going to let me pick you up like that. Okay. <laughs> okay, I got jeans down there. You can bite that. You can bite that. This one. Okay, don't bite my shoes. This is a much bigger snake. This will be considered an adolescent. You're hissing. It's getting kind of hard to hold it because she's musking on me so much. It's kind of hard to lift it off the ground. The snake's not going to let me really hold it up too well. We're going to have to get more ground shots. That is a loud snake. We don't film a lot of snakes that hiss. So this is considered a sub-adult, but not a full adult. That's okay. It's okay. So this Burmese, much bigger. Pretty snake. Good shed. Good snake. Small head for such a snake. And she's musking on me. I'm not going to focus on that right now. I got hand sanitizer. I can wash that off. But uh, it is making it harder to hold this snake. Now a snake of this size can't get back over its body very well. So it's a little bit easier for me to hold it like this on the ground. But as you can see, this is an angry snake. Okay, that's about as good as I'm gonna get. Right there. That is a big Burmese right there. Woohoo! Big berm. Don't bite my face. Don't bite my face, baby. Have a look at that! Yes! That's our second Burmese! What a trip! I'll never forget this experience. Getting to see the two most incredible apex predators of South Florida. One, a native endangered species in need of serious protection, and the other, a foreign invader in need of control. I'm so glad we got to share this experience with all of you. For now, we're heading back to Louisiana, but I'll never forget this experience, and hopefully we'll get to come back to Florida and see all the other incredible animals that call this place home. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We worked really hard on all this footage. And for those of you that made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching that. Let me know if you enjoyed it and let me know what your favorite animal in the video was. That's how I'll know if you guys made it to the end. Uh, really hope you guys enjoyed. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure to go subscribe right now. And we will see you guys next time.